state transportation projects such as light rail and streetcar coupled with a policy of turning brownfields into bustling urban districts has opened the door to economic opportunity and given more places for Oregonians to live, work, and play like this south waterfront development. Now while there has been a lot of attention to this issue of bridges lately, we cannot afford to look at transportation infrastructure in silos. We must look at it comprehensively from our highways to our bridges to our sea and airports and rail to our public transportation system. That is why following the Oregon Transportation Investment Act number three in 2003, a nearly three billion dollar initiative to update and upgrade our roads and bridges, I with the help of the legislature introduced Connect Oregon 1 in 2003 to improve our airports seaports and railways so that we would better move people, commerce, and goods. In other words, a multimodal view of our transportation system. The first legislation authorized $100 million, which is currently funding approximately 40 projects around the state aimed at improving connections between the different modes of travel, including this one we're launching today, the Portland Street Corps Lowell Street Extension. With 2.1 million in seed money from Connect Oregon 1, the city, state, and region were able to partner to make this project happen. The reality is, more and more, our economy depends on efficient and reliable trade, travel, and transportation, and these investments are critical to growing our economy today and creating stability for the future. That's why this session, working with the legislature, we passed Connect Oregon 2, a second round of lottery bonds for another $100 million for our air, rail, marine, and public transportation systems statewide. But this second round is only part of a much larger effort that we need to address, and that is a comprehensive transportation strategy for the entire state. By 2030, Oregon is projected to see a 41% increase in population. By 2030, we are projected to see an 80% increase in freight, most of which will be on Oregon's roads and highways. Increased congestion could undermine Oregon's competitiveness and hamper our economic growth and prosperity, not to mention our quality of life. This challenge is exacerbated even further by our dependence on an unstable oil supply and the skyrocketing gas prices that fluctuate uncontrollably. So while today is a positive step forward in diversifying our transportation system, much more work remains before us. And in order to be successful, it will take all of us working together, the local government, the state, federal government, the business community, community leaders, and citizens from all over our state. As we look to the 2009 legislative session, I see one of the most important issues facing the long-term economic prosperity and quality of life for Oregon is our transportation system. I, like you, want to see Oregon on a path that will lead to better jobs, less congestion, and a cleaner and more sustainable environment, which is why, in the coming months, we must work together to develop a plan that helps us make that vision a reality. Many of the community leaders that are standing here with me today will be my partners in moving Oregon forward with the transportation system that meets the needs of the 21st century. I look forward to traveling this great state and to engage all of our citizens in strengthening our transportation system and our economy. And there shouldn't be a person leave here that doesn't understand that an investment in public transportation infrastructure is a critical piece of our battle against global warming. If we, <laughs> next, next to coal-fired and oil-fired energy plants, the automobile is the largest contributor to CO2 emissions into our airshed. This city, this community, this state 
is becoming a national leader in how we can provide an urban transportation system that not only affects and addresses the economy and our quality of life, but is a leader in addressing the issues of how we combat climate change. This is the right direction, Oregon's on the map, and it's all because of you. Thank you all very, very much.